no offense to Tim. <laughs> Thank you, Tim, for that wonderful introduction. Um, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for being here at the Squash and Education Alliance 25th Anniversary Jubilee. It is wonderful to see so many new and familiar faces here this evening. I am privileged to share my story with you tonight. While I could never represent all the stories of the incredible students and alumni who are a part of the SEA network, I believe we share some commonalities in how we benefit from our programs and from SEA. So tonight, I'm going to speak directly to those commonalities and sharing with you how I believe SEA has impacted my life. To understand the magnitude of their impact, we need to start with my parents. They were born in Gambia. My father was an accomplished electrical engineer and my mother was a land use expert. When I was two years old, despite their success in Gambia, they decided to leave everything they knew behind in hopes of attaining more opportunities for me. So we moved to New York City. In leaving everything they knew, major challenges awaited my parents. They had no idea that all of their accomplishments in Gambia would not be rewarded or accepted in America. They became immigrants and not professionals. As a result, they had to restart their lives. My dad worked as a security guard at Citibank and my mom worked as a cashier at McDonald's. They didn't have any network and they struggled, but they never let these setbacks stop them. They worked hard and made sure that I knew I could achieve anything I dreamed of. We had no idea how those dreams would come to fruition. Q Street Squash. <laughs> I have been a part of Street Squash since I was 11 years old. Like most people, I had no idea what squash was. And no, I'm not gonna say the joke that everyone knows, and if you don't know, then good. When I entered the seventh grade, I started at a new school. At the day of middle school orientation, different after-school programs went up one by one and began to pitch their missions to all the rising new students and past parents. Somewhat predictably, I wasn't really paying attention to any of the presenters, but my parents were, and after the presentations, my parents said, you're going to squash practice on Monday. <laughs> I'm like, what in the world is squash? <laughs> and they responded, we don't know. <laughs> but you'll find out. And unknowingly, my parents picked a program out of a hat that has had a monumental impact on our lives. And like any other 11-year-old, I listened to my parents and I went to squash practice that Monday. 16 years later, I could not have been any more blessed to have been a part of such a wonderful program. Street Squash was and is more than just an after school program. When I was a student there, we were a family that traveled to squash tournaments and college trips and did community service projects together. When we walked the halls of school, my teachers and classmates referred to us as those squash kids. We built up this reputation that we were the most hardworking and dedicated students in our class. Through Street Squash, I wasn't just introduced to a new sport, but also to connections that I know will last a lifetime. And I validated a decision my parents made when I was only two years old. One of the connections I made through Street Squash was to my mentor, Ivy Pakoda, a four-time All-American at Harvard. <laughs> A four-time All-American at Harvard and now a critically acclaimed novelist, Ivy would spend her free time giving me private lessons at the Harvard Club and taking me to tournaments during the weekends and just hanging out with me. Now, despite losing more often than I won, I, Ivy saw something in me. She didn't care if I excelled at squash. She just wanted me to kill it at life. While spending time at the Harvard Club, I also got to know Richard Chin and got the opportunity to play with other high-performing juniors. Under Ivy's guidance, I grew tremendously as a squash player. Off the court, she was also instrumental in my college application process. I soon understood squash was a portal to a world of imagination and excellence. I spent most of my senior year at Street Squash working on my college applications. I didn't know where I wanted to go, so I applied regular decision to 10 schools. As a senior, your biggest concern is usually, will any college accept me? 
but Street Squash and Ivy worked with me to ensure that my application was top notch. By the spring, I had been accepted to eight out of the 10 schools I applied to, and when it came time to make a decision, Mary Cipollone, who was my college prep advisor at Street Squash, sat me down one-on-one, -on -one, and together we went through each of the acceptance packages. That day, I decided that Bates College was the one. And when I got to Bates, it was certainly a new challenge. <laughs> Trying not to procrastinate while going to squash practice every day and putting on enough layers to not freeze to death in negative 100 degree weather in Maine was exhausting. <laughs> All of that being said, I was lucky enough to have an amazing support system that included my squash coach, Pat Kosker. Who, who had previously been former squash director at Street Squash and whom I had the good fortune of knowing before matriculating at Bates. I was also lucky to attend Bates with other SCA graduates from Squash Busters and City Squash. Having Pat and my teammates as a sounding board when things got dark was a blessing I didn't know I needed. And they were a big help in my journey to graduation. After Bates, I moved back to New York and began the job hunting process, which I embarked upon with so much trepidation because this would be the culmination of all the years of school I had endured. This was what truly mattered at the end of the day. But before I could even think about where to start, I went straight to the place that meant everything, street squash. I chatted with the staff and ended our conversation with, I need a job. <laughs> street squash's executive director, George Polsky, and the other staff members did what they do best and began asking me a bunch of questions I did not have the answers to, but they were patient, and they allowed me to flush out ideas of what I thought I'd want to do with my life. And of course, I didn't come to any clear conclusions, but by the end of the conversation, George had emailed four different people letting them know I may have an interest in the industry they were working in. I had coffee with those four people, and suddenly, they introduced me to more people, and then I met those people, and then I'm like, whoa, my network just grew even wider. And it was then that I realized the true magnitude of shared connections. Even as my interests have changed over the years, George is always happy to connect me to anyone that he thinks might be a good person for me to network with. Fast forward to four years post-graduation, it's August, and I'm in a job interview at a global bank. I'm feeling pretty good about it, but my interviewer says he has one final question for me. He leans in, furrows his eyebrows, and he says, so, when should I use topspin and squash? <laughs> I was kind of appalled that he would confuse squash and tennis, but mostly confused that this was my final question in my interview. Turns out he had seen on my resume that I played squash in college and let me know that out of all the resumes he had seen, he pulled mine out because of my unique profile. I was a woman of color who plays squash and can code. I could never have imagined that my final interview question at a global bank would be so easy. <laughs> and this was the result of the network that was afforded to me through Street Squash. When I got the offer letter, I couldn't tell you how happy my family was. Not only because my mom is a Citibank client who thought I could somehow transfer all the bank's money into her personal account. <laughs> And if anyone here works in compliance, I did not do that. <laughs> but she was also happy because all the decisions that they made years ago was bearing more fruit. The same bank that my father worked at as a security guard so many years before. Words cannot truly express what that means to me. As I reflect on this anniversary and what makes the programs in the SEA network so extraordinary, I think about the importance of networks. I think about the friends I've made from the Bronx, from Boston, from Philadelphia, and how they have enriched my life. Those networks are only getting wider as younger SEA participants connect with students from Detroit, Oakland, and even Columbia. Life can be a smooth enough ride just by knowing the right people, and SEA programs give their students and alumni access to the most extraordinary networks, and for that, I am thankful. SCA introduced me to a world that I never imagined knowing or being a part of. But more than that, it gave me the tools to pick and choose my way to exist in that world at large. 
Street Squash taught me how to make choices and how to become myself as an individual in an ever complicated global environment. It taught me confidence and self-advocacy. And that's why I'm standing here today. Thank you all so much for being a part of it all. Your investments will continue to help these programs run for many more years to come. And I truly hope you continue to do so. I also encourage you to make it a point to connect with our students and alumni who are in the room this evening and at our programs across the country. You never know how you may impact their lives. Thank you so much.